uh, very recently AAUP, that's the American Association of University Professors, uh, conducted a study uh, and uh, they interviewed a large number of people and uh, they, you know, drawn from all walks of life. And the study states that 70% uh, of Americans who were interviewed for this study thought that the university should, as its primary function, provide job training. Right, that should be its primary function, not really to promote what we might call analytical thinking or anything of that kind, uh, much less think about things like the cultural inheritance and the intellectual inheritance of civilizations and so on. 50% uh, people thought that scholarly work, or much of it, is in fact entirely irrelevant. Uh, and over 60%, slightly over 60% thought that professors should be fired for associating with radical political. Now, it seems to me also the case that if one wanted to discuss, as we are intending to discuss today, the university, uh, the place and role of the university today, uh, its relationship with wider society, uh, and its particular place, if I may put it this way, uh, and its relationship to the war on terror, the war of terror, you can choose your preposition if you want. But uh, it seems to me that these are obviously the much larger kinds of questions that we want to address. But some of the backdrop to that uh, is unfortunately the fact that there is, it seems to me, a strong anti-intellectual tradition in American history. I think that this has some bearing on how we understand the place of the university today and historically. Um, let me suggest a few other considerations that it seems to me are important and perhaps the speakers today will uh, choose to dwell on some of, on some of these observations. Uh, we all know that some of the architects of the war, so notwithstanding the fact that there is a kind of a inherent, it seems to me, distrust in the wider public about the nature of universities and the role of intellectuals, that nonetheless, we do know that the architects of the war, many of the architects of the war and their supporters, have been drawn from the ranks of the university, not just universities, the elite universities indeed, right? Uh, there is a case of Condoleezza Rice, former provost at Stanford, Wolfowitz, uh, dean of the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies. Let's not forget that one of the most assiduous defenders of the administration and its policies uh, is a law professor at UC Berkeley who was also instrumental in creating much of the discourse, the present discourse on torture uh, and justifying the American position on torture. Um, we also have at the same time, it seems to me, a number of uh, attacks, if I may put it this way, I use this word rather loosely here, uh, but, but there's no questioning the fact that there have been a number of assaults, investigations, and assault, assault, uh, attacks that have been concentrated uh, on universities and intellectuals. Uh, in other words, there are various attempts to suppress what one might describe as dissenting views. Uh, uh, these dissenting views run the gamut from particular positions espoused by individuals. Uh, for example, there happen to be a group of people, uh, not very large, but but it's slowly gaining momentum, who, who take the position that, that, the, that the official government or state view about 9-11 is in fact the view that disguises a great many things, that this is not the entire truth. So some of them have been pressing for investigations uh, to really determine what exactly did happen on 9-11. Some of these people have been silenced. There are ample reports that have appeared in newspapers over the course of the last two to three years of professors whose views on these kinds of questions uh, have been silenced. Now, the most well-known case of an individual who is the subject of some of these investigations is obviously the case of Ward Churchill, uh, a long-standing tenured professor and an activist, uh, somebody whose work on Native American studies is well-known. Uh, I also do know that the work is highly disputed, uh, but nonetheless, notwithstanding that fact, uh, if you look at the case of Ward Churchill, who is uh, firing has been recommended. In fact, there's, we are now at the last steps, so to speak, of the investigation into this. I mean, a determination has been made to fire him, and it's simply a, a matter for uh, the, the chancellor, really, uh, to take a decision on this question. The university is, in many respects, the principal repository of the intellectual and cultural inheritance of the people. One of the last places where one can, for example, engage in something called humanist learning, right? It is also the only institution that has not been wholly captured by money interests, or if I may use the old-fashioned phrase, the military industrial complex, right, and so on. Uh, and I might say that even here, the future is not very encouraging from my standpoint, because you increasingly see the corporatization of the American university. This is continuing pace. 
uh, and this is again an important consideration. Uh, conservatives like uh, David Horowitz, uh, who has been one of the principal ideologues involved in some of these movements, uh, point to the fact that professors are much more likely, particularly professors in the humanities and social sciences, are much more likely to be registered Democrats and Republicans. Uh, of course, on the standpoint of someone like myself, that doesn't make an iota of difference because there's nothing to suggest that Democrats in this country have been any more progressive, really, on substantive issues than have the Republicans. The point, uh, nonetheless, is that to whatever limited extent, it seems to me that the university is one of the few remaining sites of dissent. Uh, people like ourselves have certainly determined that it should remain that way, and it seems to me that there are people on the other side who are quite firmly convinced that it is precisely this site of the university which needs to be uh, 